Welcome back, friends, to Reverb 2024, day two. I'm sitting here with uh, the first performer that was on stage today. Yes. Um, Amber Pacific, but you're the singer Matt, yep. Matt Young? Yeah. Killer. Absolutely. Ah, I can't believe I figured that out. You you were on it. Dude, it's, yeah, it's difficult for me. Tell me about your experience here in Eau Claire so far. Uh, it was, I mean, it's pretty exceptional. Like, I mean, for us, we're... Uh, the only band on the bill today where this is uh, not necessarily our full-time job anymore. Yeah. And um, so to be with so many amazing artists who are still crushing it 20 years later and celebrating, you know, records that came out that influenced us as a band in the early 2000s is, uh, is pretty cool. Yeah. So it was, it, was, it was an awesome experience that we were able to uh, kind of come out and get the show started off on uh, the right foot, hopefully, and yeah. uh, get everybody ready to go because we, we got a great night ahead of us. Yeah, well, I think that's one of the best parts, right, is you get to catch up and hang out with all these bands again and see them perform because a lot of times when you're going on tour and you're performing, like, it's cool because everyone who's there is there to see you and they're singing along and you have that connection, but it's kind of fun just being a fan too. Yeah, I mean, and, and I was actually out uh, interacting with some people in, in the crowd after we were done playing, which right away is already something Something that is a benefit of, of playing early and 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 sharing stories and things like that from the early warp tour days and uh, from our time touring with Hawthorne Heights or uh, remember before we ever signed our first record deal uh, January of 2004 singing Ocean Avenue from Yellow Card and then uh, having conversations with Ryan and the guys uh, for the little bit of time we were together with them in some 41 like yeah. I mean and and so it's just so great to have an opportunity where especially for a band like us that isn't playing every night like we're probably going to have more nerves um make sure that we're uh as tight as we can be for people who aren't together i mean we've got guys in nashville and and and, and washington for crying out loud so uh once the performance is done and trying to do the best we can then it's able to relax a little bit and hang out and and hang out as fans and friends is is a pretty cool combo. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's impressive that anyone can do something for as long as you guys have. You know, even if you are supplementing income with your jobs and stuff, it's hard to juggle that. And when you have kids, like my, I have kids, yeah. I have an eight-year-old and an 11-year-old, Yeah, but I live here. And I intentionally do my work in the general area because it's really hard to leave kids. Yeah. It's hard to be a good family man, a good father, and still juggle this type of thing. It's crazy that you say that because one of... Um, the things that uh, I posted on my personal like Facebook, so not on the band one or whatever, is I, I before I uh, came here to do this show, we're recording our next album, uh, and uh, I finished our final uh, vocal track down in Nashville. And so this summer has been spent away from family, away from my wife and 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 and, and my my uh, nine year old daughter. And I wanted to make sure that I took the time to let everybody know in my inner circle, right? Like, I only get to do this because I have their support. You know what I mean? Like, we're making sights and sounds on a record that eventually everybody will be able to hear, but no matter what, what they're not going to hear is, is um, uh, like our producer is working until, working 14 hour days right alongside with me. And, you know, his kid comes down and is like, hey dad, can you tuck me in? And having to not be there, he wasn't there for the first day of preschool and all the sacrifices that go in sometimes, yeah. uh, uh, particularly from our kids and our wives that don't go recognize or notice. So I wanted to make sure that as I was wrapping up my time away and then playing a couple shows and including today and then going home, right. uh, wanted to make sure that it's understood like it's, it's, it is something that we have to have people behind us supporting what it is that we do because if we do have to leave, right. y you have to have that support or like, what are you doing it for? Yeah. Well, and I think as parents, kids don't listen to you that much, but they watch you. Yes. Right. And, and I think leading by example is like, in my opinion, that's how I choose to parent. I think my kids see what I choose to do for a living, where yeah. I put my time and energy. They understand that I have, you know, I have to work a lot, but I think for me, that's like the best way for me to inspire and parent them to be the people that they want to be in the future. And so what, what I am doing, so it's kind of crazy where, where I'm going to get done recording a record, playing these shows. And then in two weeks, I'm going to be welcoming seventh grade students into my classroom for the first day of school. And one of the things that I always tell them is that I teach like I parent 
and I parent like I coach and because I'm a coach as well. But I say that because I want them to understand like, I'm gonna treat you the same way I'm gonna treat my own kid. And yeah. if you're an athlete of mine, I'm gonna treat you the same way as, as my kid or my student. Like, and, and sometimes that may not always be what you wanna hear. You know what I mean? Like sometimes as, as a parent, we gotta, we, we would love nothing more to not have to be the bad guy, right? right? Like, um, and, and so hearing you talk about like show, the way in which you show them, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what I say if my actions are something entirely different, yeah. right? And and one of the ways that you can show whether it's your kid or your students or whatever is 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 you got to be present. Yeah. And so trying to be conscious of that as I am away or as you know I do get on an airplane and and play these shows yeah. that hey you know I'm I'm not here now. But but I will be, and when I am there, I'll I'll be there for you. And it's interesting because she's at a weird stage. My nine year old, uh, like she's getting into the genre of music. So okay. where you talk about where it's like they watch you, right? Like so obviously this is a genre I listen to, right? And but I'm 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 cool enough. I'd like to think that I let her choose. Like okay, you you want to run the playlist for today when we're driving, whatever. And. Uh, obviously, Taylor Swift was dominating the playlist. Like, sure. can't avoid it, right? Yeah. But then it actually transitioned to Paramore for a little bit, and 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 then um, after Paramore, it transitioned to Fall Out Boy for a little bit, and so we started kind of entering Dad's genre a little yeah. bit. And it was honestly just a few months ago she had her friend over for a sleepover, and it was the first time that. I realize that my kid thinks I'm okay and cool, but may not tell me because she had her and her friend over for a sleepover and they were singing one of our songs and knew every word. And they had the door closed oh, and it okay. certainly was not something they probably wanted me to, to know. hear or yeah. know, but I'm like, oh, she knows. You know what I mean? Because I'm not gonna be like, we're gonna listen to dad's song in the car right, today, yeah, yeah. you know? Um, and so that was like, oh, that's cool. And then, I'm like, oh, do you want to hear any of dad? No, I don't want to hear any dad's new songs. Can we listen to Bowling for Soup? So now she's into Bowling for Soup. But she, but at least we're in the we're in the genre, and you want and and, and it's like, okay, that's that's kind of cool. I like to have uh, guests do little selfie videos and like say what's up to my kids. Yeah. Because like they're with my dad right now while I'm working yeah. all day. You know what I mean? So I, yeah. I do that periodically. Um, and it's funny because my kids, I don't think they like really get what I do that much. They're old enough, but when I can show them somebody and then like play their music, like Tom Higginson from the Plain White Tees, right? Absolutely. So like he did a little shout out to them. And then I played Yeah, we shared a bus music. with them and it was the year of, it was the year of playing, of Hey There Delilah. Oh my God. Yeah, no joke, we were with them. Uh, I remember we, uh, that was Warp Tour, I think it would have been 06. Yeah. Yeah, it was 06. But I mean that song was like as and, big as it gets. And we picked, and we picked him up from his parents' house. I'm not playing. And, oh. and, we're, and that was their first time on a bus and we shared a bus together. And uh, yeah, and, and, and it was on that Warp Tour in 06 that, wow. that it broke radio. Yeah, so yeah. That, and so I just love hearing that here we all are and we had this previous life, but we're still in the same, you know what I mean? Like yeah, we're the totally. same people and we're still able to do this and it just looks different in, yeah. in what it is that you have to, you know, and, and the way in which you navigate it. And I think for everybody here, it makes you a better artist. Like, yeah. Well, I think you just have to be more intentional with everything you do, right? Everything. In order to make it even everything. possible. So let's talk about that intentionality with the new album. Yeah. It, it's been a long time since you guys put an album and obviously you guys have your career, so it's not like you need to put out another album at this point. No. Like, why did you choose to? Why is it worth putting all the time and energy into? Um, the resurgence has really helped. I mean, I mean, where uh, the pop punk warp tour, I'd say genre, is currently at. There's this like wave. You know what yeah. I mean? And and um, we released our our the turn in in 2014. And so that I was like my third year teaching at the time. And so I would I would teach, coach, and then go record a song and then get back home at uh, like midnight. Cause it was at Monkey Trench Studios all the way out in Bremerton uh, with MXPX. And and like, honestly, that record in, in 2014, I, I, I just recently married, found out my wife was pregnant. And, and that record was like for my kid, to be honest, like sure. just, you're not here yet, but I'm gonna make a record for you. We, we, we self-released it. Uh, we had an Indiegogo campaign where people funded the record totally. Like, I mean, 
not independent label, like independent as you can be, right? And 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 I thought that was probably that was probably it artistically. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and and if we get a phone call for a reverb festival, like if they want us like holy cow yeah we'll yeah. we'll come but they weren't coming and and so um with all of a sudden i don't know what came first but all of a sudden we started getting offers to shows and all of a sudden um we started getting in contact uh with with bands who are touring and things like that and then we're like Oh, this is really happening. Like, and seeing the crowds at all, like, it's crazy. There are a lot of people it singing is, every word today. And, and so, and so we're kind of like, oh, well, let's, let's, do, if we're going to do it, let's do it now. And, um, and so we fully committed to it. And what's crazy is, is it's 10 years of Will, our songwriter, our guitarist. These are his best 12 songs. It's not writing a record because you have to, and it's been two years since your last release, and you have to do it while you're touring and while you're. This is, this is him. He's a he's a pilot for FedEx, and so this is him, after he's you know in China and he's sitting in a hotel room, and he's like, you know what I want to do? I want to just write a song without any intent for it to be heard by anybody. But let me just write a song, and he got this huge collection of songs, and it's like whoa and, and we get to choose the best yeah. right i mean full transparency truth and sincerity our our second full length album after the possibility and the promise was a two-year turnaround and you're touring all the time and it's kind of like well it's time for it's time for a record like we got to have some songs we're going to be in the studio and here's the money in here it's already booked and it's already scheduled and so it's not necessarily writing from a place of just true experience and writing to write right. and that's what he did for 10 years and then there's this resurgence and now it's like we have songs that we want to put out there yeah. and uh, there's a lot of things I can't share today that people don't yet know that would further answer that question sure. but part of part of it is that there were songs that were not just enjoyed um, by us but by others who heard them as demos and so it helped get us back into the studio and 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 have uh, hot heavy investment and support from people who heard it it's pretty yeah. cool yeah I mean my I guess when people ask my goals yeah I always tell them I just want to be financially free to create without bias, without anything pushing me to do it at a certain time, because I'm not lazy, I'll be naked stuff, yeah. but I just wanna be able to do it as, as it feels right. And that's kind of the beauty of having a full-time job, right? Is yeah. Because there, it, you don't have to do anything as far as music goes, it's not required. You can just do it simply because you want to, but most people won't do that, because it's a shit ton of work. It is. You know what I mean? So to choose to do that when it's not something you need to do financially is, is is it's a lot to ask from everyone in the band yeah you know what i mean but it shows a lot about you guys as a band so everyone needs to go follow you on social media if they don't because that's going to be the best way to keep up with yeah. like when stuff's coming out right yeah at Inter pacific official and um where yeah lots of announcements are are, are going to be here in the uh very new future and and what i can say is yeah vocal vocals are tracked the songs that'll be on the record uh, painstakingly and 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 not without you know challenges in any recording and creative process of of disagreements and direction and whatever but iron sharp iron sharpens iron and uh, and so we know what 12 songs are going to be out there um, and we have two that are are we're excited to potentially get out there as as soon as possible so share one more story with me with this okay. uh, this album coming up and you got these 12 songs yeah what's the first story that comes to mind um, behind recording or writing one of those songs for you? Um, I think it ties back to what I talked about earlier is that everybody always says, and so like I'm going to say it and everybody says it and I just want to roll my eyes at myself and maybe maybe your audience who listens to this like you're going to give a caveat and then you're going to do exactly what everybody does and that's like this record we've matured and, 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 and man, you know, I had bands where I'm like, they matured and I go, yeah, but I like, I like the old you. I like, 
I like what it is that you started out as. I mean, I mean, I'm not going to stay in our genre, but I'm going to use the Beatles as an example. Like a great example of like those who love the Beatles in the beginning probably may not have liked the Beatles in the end. There's not many people like Taylor Swift who can kind of be an amoeba and transform and literally dictate the direction of what it is that people want to listen to. And so this record is one where we wanted to stay true to who we are true to if you are part of the people who still are holding on to possibility and the promise or truth and sincerity or you're here singing you know gone so young at the reverb festival like we want to make sure that you know that we are we we are writing for you and we don't want you to get our record and go what in like what is wait is that amber pacific you'll know it's amber pacific but we have some things that we could not have done as as honestly kids i mean first record i was doing at 19 years old and i had literally been in this band for a month like a year and a half like i mean it wasn't like we were grinding and then we recorded a record we were like in college when we got our record deal and, and had there was it was just something we were doing for fun yeah and so we weren't ready for all of the things that came to it we thought we were i mean oh you know course, yeah. we got a record deal so of course we're awesome but looking back on it now it's like no you you had so much to learn in terms of the way you deliver i'll just speak for me like a vocal and with emotion and with meaning and to now have context uh almost 40 years you can redact that if necessary uh, for my sake but like after 40 years of experience like now when I go sing a song I want to make sure that it has purpose beyond just the writing and the lyrics that like I want to make sure that it is felt by those who are listening to it and that's something that I don't think I ever thought of and maybe it ties back into what you were talking about earlier where you know when there there was a period of time where we started out as a band because we wanted to do it because we loved it and we thought it was cool and then it became a job, which is just what kind of happens as you kind of move up the music ladder. Like eventually yeah. you have people relying on you and, and you have people you got to kind of answer to, to be in certain places or do certain things. And, but with this one, it's just, it's us. And it's us in our full authentic selves with experience and singing songs from a place that are about our kids and trying to connect to people who've grown up with us, but also trying to make sure that the new uh, generation that is discovering this style of music, like, are we gonna be their band? We may not be a new band, but as far as where we are in the hierarchy of all these bands that are here today, well, the 20 year olds can claim us. You know yeah, what I mean? Like sure. like the, the the 90s is Green Day and, and into the early 2000s is then like Blink. And then you have the Fallout Boys who are like, you know, like what's the band from your generation? You know what I mean? Right, yeah. And like, why can't we be the 20 year olds? Absolutely. New band. And so that's kind of what we're, we're hoping for where we're able to reach a new generation of people where, oh, that's not my parents' band. Yeah that's mine and while still making sure that we're not forgetting like those who've been there from the beginning that's a hard line to walk and everybody says their most recent records their best one but 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 this is and and i think it's the emotion in it and the 10 years of best songs as opposed to 10 weeks of your best songs certainly is something that i think people will hear well, then everyone needs to go follow you guys on Spotify and then pre-save that thing once all that information <laughs> is out there. Yeah, so once they the count to it. yeah, once the countdown's on yeah, Spotify, yeah. you know, for the whole album drop, absolutely save that and then and then uh, and then listen to the singles as, as many times as you can before the rest of it comes out. Add it to everyone's playlist so these numbers just spike for these guys. <laughs> that would be hey, that was yeah, that would that would be great. If 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 you if you'd think that you listening to a band, they don't pay attention and don't look and don't check. We absolutely Absolutely do. So it, it's pretty. It'd be pretty awesome if these songs come out and and we see that we're getting new listeners and, and things like that. That would be that would be pretty incredible. Hell yeah! Everyone, go follow uh, Passion Pot as well. If you haven't yet, the show you got to go listen to yeah. the show. Follow seriously. The show. This is Leave great. And all this stuff. You know what I mean? Make this stuff possible. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.